Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our live event broadcast, Making It Together. I'm Jenna. I'm Bob. And we are on episode five, five. of this. Yeah, so it's our fifth day going live with you guys. Uh, while we're all experiencing a little bit of downtime, we want to take uh, this moment and try to maximize it as much as we can by being able to educate and show different things. So we do have a really exciting topic so for exciting. you. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm listening. <laughs> um, this is like your wheelhouse. You love this stuff. I love so this we're stuff. actually, uh, you can see the big printer behind me. We're actually going to be focusing on print cut. So every day we ask you guys to um, fill out a survey, uh, which we then look at and see which topics that you guys are interested in, um, in full color transfers for uh, T-shirts and performance apparel was uh, about 90% of our response. Right. So you guys are dying to know a little bit more about um, all the full color options there are out there. And that's what we're going to do here today from start to finish. Um, and for those of you that aren't familiar with full color, we do have a project on the front end that we wanted to start out with um, to show you what full color looks like and how we achieve that uh, very easily with just a heat press. Um, so the garment or item that we're going to be heat applying today is a fully sublimated drawstring bag. And um, this is a really popular item right now if you're looking to offer accessories to your customers. This one was sourced from Sanmar. As you can see, it's um, by the New Era brand, and it's fully sublimated. Um, and with all the innovations out there and everything we need to think about when it comes to uh, printing sublimation, uh, the first thing would be dye blocking because we don't want any of those inks to begin to migrate through our transfer. So we do have a specific um, digitally printed product that we're gonna be utilizing to heat apply this so that we don't have to worry about any of those inks changing the whites or um, the gray colors in this full color transfer uh, to that red that we're seeing in the bag. All right, so we're gonna be utilizing the auto clam for this application. And you can see we have a different size platen loaded on here. This is the eight by 10. And what this allows me to do is isolate a certain area of the bag that I wanna be able to customize for my customers. Uh, so key thing, it's something that we always talk about, that's time, temperature, and pressure. Um, and pressure being key so that we can get that adhesive to really hold on the bag and um, withstand any wash cycle. All right, so it's to preheat and make sure my pressure is dialed in accurately. I'm going to uh, lock the top heating element down, but I'm gonna make sure that I have a cover sheet in case any of this ink happens to migrate um, whenever we are doing that preheat. All right, so I'm just gonna lock this down for just a few seconds. My pressure is good. The products we're gonna be heat applying um, on this bag is known as CAD prints or CAD color, depending on how you're producing this. Um, and it is Sublistop. So what it has is actually a charcoal backing, all right? So it's completely back on, black on the um, back side of this where the adhesive is. So that inhibits any of those dyes from migrating through. All right, and we're gonna be showing you again from start to finish, if you're just joining us, how you can achieve this full color look um, with just a heat press and also a print cut machine. All right, Bob, what type of um, printer cutter are we gonna be showing today? Today we're gonna be looking at the Roland TrueViz SG2300. It's the, uh, one of the latest models. Uh, they've, mm -hmm. they've evolved over the years and this one is the, uh, uh, the current value printer out there uh, that does a great job. So we'll get in detail about that in a little bit. All right, great. All right, so this is a hot peel. So as soon as that is done heat applying, the heat press does the work for me. Uh, so I can just remove that carrier and I have a completed, fully printed design on this bag, which just really um, looks very premium, right? Mm -hmm. So this is something that I could um, definitely mark up with being able to add that full color effect there as opposed to just a single color. Absolutely. Right, so that's another thing we'll be reviewing today um, beyond just what that process looks like. It's also what the cost of produce is and how you can really market this to your customers and get a good value out of the product you're producing. All right, so um, as we are going through this, we're gonna be monitor monitoring comments and questions throughout the broadcast. 
So feel free to comment those in at any time. We always love to see who's joining us every day and where you guys are joining from. Yesterday we had somebody from Sweden, right? Sweden, yeah. yeah. So that was interesting. So yeah, we're, we're always um, intrigued by who all joins us and where from. So do we have a target to hit today? We do have a target to hit today. What's the number? I want to get 100 people. You want to get 100 people. I just... All right. We're already at 62. Wow. Dog. I'm here, okay? <laughs> what? Bob's here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we're going for 100. Let's do it. You, crazy things will happen when we hit 100. All right. So you want to start us off with... Um, yeah. We're going to take a look okay. at the whole process from start to finish because most of you said you love to see that. You want to see from the very beginning what it takes to produce a design. And yeah, uh, we are going to start with some of the artwork. We're going to do it on the printer. We're going to print, cut, weed, mask, and press. So you'll get a chance to see that uh, from all. We're not going to get as totally granular because we only have X amount of time to get here. Uh, but there's a lot more detail that we that we won't cover, but you should get a good idea of exactly what it takes. So let's go to my screen because we're starting with a design. And there you can see, um, yep, I ripped it off, off the internet, traced it, did whatever. As you all do the same thing. So we need... Um, to very start off, we need vector type of artwork. Okay, so if you don't have vector, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible. It will, the machine will print uh, raster or pixelated type of images, but vector uh, is one, and let me just go to uh, show my view to wireframe. When you hit wireframe, I'm in Corel Draw, by the way, you'll see lines. It basically looks like a coloring book that hasn't been filled in yet. That's, that lets you know that you, that you have vector artwork. Otherwise, it will be kind of grayed out and kind of pixelated. Um, so when, you, when you see that type of image. So let me go back to normal because I can't deal with that. All right, back in normal. Now again, like I said, I, I, uh, I saw this design, actually was actually my granddaughter needed it for a birthday party, so I uh, found the logo, the, the design that I liked, traced it in Corel. We're not gonna go through that portion of it, but the trick is now what we need to do is create cut lines. So we need to put a border around every area that we need to cut, okay? So while the printer itself sees all of these colors here, it will print them, but we're gonna choose a particular spot color called Cut Contour. This is coded so that when uh, the VersaWorks rip software, which we'll go to next, sees that particular color, it recognizes that as the cut line. So it'll print all the other colors and then cut on the line we put it. Now, way back in the day, I'm pretty old, so I remember all this bad, the bad days, um, you used to have to take this copy it on another page, we would weld it, and then put a, a line, an outline around it, and then just grab the outline and take it back to the other page, and then edit all the areas that you didn't want to come in. In other words, if I just right click on a particular spot color, this is cut contour now, it would put a line around every color. I don't want that, I just want to cut around the areas that I want to cut. So in between all these multicolor main that's going on there with the pink and orange and blue and purple, we don't want lines there. We just want it around every place where actually color hits white. So there's a really easy way to do that. Thank you, Corel. Since Corel 13, um, it's been available right up here. First of all, your design has to be ungrouped. And then when you go right to this, which says Create Boundary, it will create a, a new object that surrounds selected objects. So basically, it's just going to put a line everywhere where there is void, but where color hits color, not so much, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now, the only thing I have left to do is to right-click, and this is the way Corel works. You Illustrator guys, you're on your own because I know, have no clue. But, but it's, well, you know, it's, there's plenty of tutorials out there. And actually, if you bought one of these, we would, we would show you exactly how to do all these things. I'm going to right-click on that particular, this particular spot color, and what it did is it changed that particular line, what used to be black. Now it is that magenta type of color there. And I know that that's my cut contour because it tells me down here. 100% cut contour down here at the bottom. This is now ready to export, okay? So uh, we always, unlike regular CAD cut, we do everything in the positive here with the exception of clear. Uh, but almost everything that we're, we're printing onto is a white material. The inks in this uh, process are translucent, so they don't have opacity in themselves, so we need to print onto white material for the opacity so that those, you know, the color doesn't show through. Do you have any questions? It's up to you to do questions. No questions yet, just okay. people commenting yeah. and where they're from. Yeah, we did get somebody from Sweden. Yep. <laughs> Good to see you. Have you. Hear you. Um, so anyway, um, if you do have questions throughout this, please shout them out there. And if I can answer them, I certainly will. Or Jen can have a shout out as well. So now we're, here we are. We're ready to go. Now just go export. I'll just do file, export. 
and I'm going to export. I can either go, the, the RIP software that we're, we're going to bring this in that runs the actual printer uh, is an Adobe-based uh, RIP software. So an EPS or a PDF are just fine. I've been, I'm old school. I've been going EPS forever. I'm not changing it, even though they say it likes PDF better. It's okay. So I would export it. I already have this particular design saved in here, so I'm not going to export it. Uh, but it would just go into, if you see where, what I've got, I've got under my demo files, I have a, a folder called VersaFiles. And I know that everything in that folder is prepped and ready to print on the VersaCam or on the, on the uh, TrueVis SG or any, any real print and cut unit. So in other words, it, everything's in there. It's not just my raw artwork that you'd have in Corel. Everything in this folder is ready to, 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 to print and cut. So I'll just hit cancel on that. Next, we're going to open up VersaWorks. VersaWorks looks just like this. Now this is, this can be confusing here, but it's going to get a lot easier here in just a bit. Uh, this is the um, software that actually talks to the printer. It's the one that actually uh, translates all of these digital images and does exactly what you want. And it's actually really a, a, a very um, bold, uh, aggressive software to get things, all the things it could do. Uh, it, it, it's probably one of the top uh, RIP softwares out there raster image processing. Can you speak um, to the artwork softwares that we're utilizing um, today uh, in this broadcast? We do have some questions on where people can access Corel Draw, and then also um, speak a little bit about VersaWorks and how you can access that as well. Sure. Well, first mm -hmm. of all, in the design software, Corel Draw, it's its own entity. We have nothing to do with it as a company. It's just, it's one of, been one of these standards. It's kind of the workhorse out there. Illustrator, just kind of naturally uh, from folks who have been classically trained in graphic arts, usually work with a Mac because it's the more robust type of platform. Yeah, yeah, Joe's pounding, you know, give me fist bumps out there. He likes the Mac. I'm a, I'm a PC guy just because I'm old and it's not intuitive for me. But uh, so Corel has typically been the one that people work with when they're working with PC, and it's kind of what is used primarily in the commercial world. So graphic artists love um, Illustrator or the whole Adobe suite, where the rest of us who, the, you know, the grunt labor in, in the world are using the Corel Draw for the most part. Both can be, can be used just nicely. Accessing it, you're little, it's literally just an online purchase. Um, and it's, they have become more of an online platform with all the updates now that you don't have to send any CDs or disks or anything like that anymore, because most of our computers don't even have disk drives anymore. So it can be just, you can just Google Corel, Corel Draw Graphic Suite. That's what I'd look for, because then you would get the photo paint and all the other things that go with it. Uh, and then there's, you can get different versions of it. The VersaWorks, on the other hand, that is something that comes with the printer. So if you purchase one of these printers, the VersaWorks is included within that, which is a great value. I mean, it's literally worth thousands of dollars um, if, it, if it will be sold by itself. But it is necessary to run the printer, so it's included in the package when you purchase one of these. Uh, usually online type of download these days. It's rare that you see a disc in anything anymore. And so speaking of packages, uh, we do have um, some packages that we're going to be showing a little later. Yes, yeah, stick um, around for that. Yeah, some good stick stuff. around. It's something that I totally forgot to mention in the open of the okay. broadcast, but I did want to let you guys know that we are running um, some specials during this time. So if you guys are interested in any of the equipment that we have been showing for the past week or even today, uh, we'll be uh, sharing those packages with you later mm -hmm. and going into more depth of each of those as well. Yeah. Hopefully I don't get too, too, too long-winded here so we have time for all that <laughs> stuff. Uh, but once I start talking about this stuff, it's hard to stop me. <laughs> all right, so this is what I live and breathe. Love this, love this portion. I really, really believe in the print cut process, as you can tell. By, I'm actually animated, not sitting around going, whatever, Jenna. <laughs> so it's an exciting, it's exciting process. So we're in VersaWorks. What I would do, I just created that design in Corel, exported it into my file. So the next thing I would do is go to File. Add job to Q, and you see A, B, C, D, E. Um, I, you know, because I don't, don't work, this is not my day job, is to create designs and, and use, utilize the software a lot. I use, just put everything in QA. So I would add job to QA, and then I would go look for the one that I had. And I think I called that unicorn, something like that. So I could even search by unicorn, or I know how the alphabet goes. And I can just scroll down here and find it, and then... There's, uh, okay, there's Unicorn Brother, that's another one. I don't know where the other one is. Anyway, double click it and it comes in. I already have it in my queue, so I'm not gonna put it in there again, that just gets confusing. So let's just pretend, if you will, that that has come in, and I'll just hit cancel here. And there it is right here, Unicorn. I double click on that. Now it's opening up, and this is where the fun part starts. I had already prepped this one already, but we can just pretend like there was not a, uh, 
there was only one image that came in and it looked like that. Or this is the way it prints properly out of the, there you go. Now you can see it, make it look real. The very first thing I do, I say get media width because I am connected through ethernet. I'm actually wireless right now. I'm not even touching that, that, that uh, device behind me. Uh, but because it has its own IP address, I can connect to that machine. Uh, so I would say get media width. And what it does, it changes this white palette that you see. This represents how much I have to work with. And that's exactly, it's right between the pinch rollers. We happen to have 20 inch wide material in the machine right now. So this is showing me that I have 17.9, basically 18 inches worth of material to work with. You lose what the width of the pinch rollers on each side. So you can always assume somewhere around 18 inches on a 20 inch, 28 inches or, or something like that on the, on the 30 inch wide material. So hit get media width. And because we're in the, uh, uh, we're doing the layout process now. They took, the, there it is, you hover over, it says layout. I hate, they did, went to icons with the new one and I, I don't retain things well. So um, the size, as you can see, is there. I got MIDI width. Now we're going to talk about the size of the design. I can, while you can size it in Corel or Illustrator, you can also change it here. And I'll show you why. If we happen to be, where are we at? 6.25 on the width. I'm going to retain that. If I put this up to, say, 8 inches, and they say, we, you know, this is the way the design came in, and I try to add copies to it, it's going to do its best. No, that's about it. I can change this and say maybe, oh, there's a better use of it. So I can now actually see that I've got, I'm kind of maximizing my space. If I wanted to cheat and get a little bit more, I said, wow, they, eight inches is great, but uh, let's, a little bit bigger wouldn't be bad. We can try to bump it up. No, and it switches over. So we just actually got lucky and maxed out to uh, the size. Bottom line is you can adjust the size of the design right here based on what your, your, your customer's needs are. Now, you can also nest designs. In other words, I can bring another one in to this and print X amount of each one if I decided to do that. We'll do that in just a little bit. But let's go back to this size, because I like this size for our, for our process. I'm going to change the copy down to one so we can start from scratch. And now I'll go back to two. That kind of maximized my space. I can change the spacing. Right now we're at a quarter of an inch, and if, to get a little bit more size out of it if I wanted to, I could change that down so it was a little tighter. Now I could actually increase the size of that design a little bit. So you've got some, you got some, you, know, so you can play around here just a little bit. So once I have got my layout, so I've got the, uh, the roll width, I've got my design size the way I want it to be, and then I would go to quality, which is the next tab down. So you're really starting at the top and working your way down. Uh, and now you choose the media type. This has express print. Well, I happen to be working with, right now, I am working with uh, soft opaque, actually one of my favorite materials, uh, because it is very, very thin and stretchable, and it's just, the colors are great. So, it's, so it's, it probably has the best hand, uh, one of the best hands for a more affordable line of material. So I'm going to change that. As you look in here, now I don't have a whole lot of profiles loaded in here. Uh, I could have a ton of them in here, including all the rolling profiles as far as you know, decal and signs and banners, wall graphics, etc. Uh, but I'm going to choose our soft opaque profile. And then there's one more thing that I like to do, and it's already preset for that. True rich color. With this new SG2, this true rich color, true rich color, I can say it, um, is kind of the go-to. It just balances the colors nicely and gives you the, the, the maximum depth of color, good saturation without overdoing it. And the reason that we pick a profile like this, because somebody much smarter than myself has already taken this material with that machine, with this ink, and optimized the settings and saved them in, in one particular quick pick. So I've got this one. Whatever material I'm using, I can just know that the settings are proper because they're different heaters. There's two different heaters on the machine, one in the back to preheat the, uh, the print receptor so it accepts the inks nicely, and even a dryer, uh, drying unit on the apron of the machine to help dry the inks when it's, before it goes back to, to, uh, to cut. All those settings are, are set in there, which leads to why I do this last step, which is go down to here under printer controls. And I've got, if you see in the heater controls, it says use printer settings. That means I would have to know what the printer settings or the heater settings are supposed to be at the printer and set them there. But instead, I'm going to say use default media settings. So those are embedded in that profile. So it knows exactly what temperature both of those heaters needs to be to give me the best quality and to get my, my, uh, my color saturation the best. That is done, and honestly, we would be ready to send this to the printer by just saying OK at this point. Um, yes. Now, I obviously had something different, so it's asking me if I want to go, you know, change the settings. I say, yep, what I did, what I meant to do. 
But I want to do one more thing. Not only do you have this cool little design, this is for my, it was my granddaughter's birthday, but she, she now has a little brother. So I have c created another one that's, oh, it's little brother. So between these two designs, I'm going to actually hit control and take that one and hit the unicorn face. And now, and go down to here where it says nest and click that. Now both of these, when I open this, come on baby, are in here. Okay, well I don't need two of these, I only need one of each. So first thing I'm gonna do is just click on this design and say change that to one. What do we do first? Get media width. Got it. That's probably maximizing the space perfectly. Now if I did a bunch of these, you would, you would fool with this. You would change them and turn them, whatever makes sense. It'll do its best to, to maximize the space. I'm gonna go back through, pick soft opaque for that one. This one is on soft opaque as well. Just gotta make sure that we're good on both designs because they're actually being treated separately. So once we've got the size and the uh, right profile picked, I'm gonna go back here and make sure that we're default media settings for that, default media settings for that. Now we are good, I say okay. All right, so uh, the next step that I would do, I would literally just click on the print icon. But before we do that, I wanna make sure that my machine is ready to go. Uh, so I'm gonna step over to the, to the printer. Joe's gonna change cameras and we're gonna very quickly just uh, do a real basic um, test. So I have the particular material in here now and Right now, I've got 20 inch. I already got it loaded. I won't go through all the steps of how you load it in the back because there is a, you know, there's a holder in the back to hold the media on the roll, and it's already loaded up through. There are uh, the pinch rollers are in place. I've already done all that. Now, the only thing we need to make sure that we do is a test cut. So those of you who are using just regular cutters, you are you know that you need to test to make sure that you're not cutting too deeply or deep enough, etc. So to do that, we just just like you do on a standard on a standard cutter. Oh, my little guy went to sleep. I just go to function, you can't see all this now, but I just go to function and then up to cut configuration, hit the right button and there's test cut. Well before I do that, I because I've done this a lot, I kind of know what range we should be in. I know I'm not going to cut 150 grams of force on this very thin material, so I'm going to at least check that first and I'll check it and see where we are. I obviously have this set properly, uh, but if I, if I didn't, it would show up on the test cut. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter for the test cut. Real quick for those of you that are just now joining, uh, just to reiterate kind of where we're at, uh, we are going through the print and cut process to get full color designs onto apparel. We've already gone through the artwork setup between Corel Draw and VersaWorks, and now we are getting ready to print our design on the Roland printer here. Right, and just to Review again, it's the TrueViz SG2 300. The 300 means it's a 30 inch wide machine. One of the benefits, which is crazy, that I like about this machine is they added a light, which is awesome because I used to have bring out, at this point I used to have to bring out the, my flashlight on my phone to actually see what I was, what was doing here. This little bluish light helps show up those, uh, those images a little bit better so I can actually see where I am. This is actually the first time I'm seeing this happen with this new printer. So when that light turned on, I was like, very pleased. It's I was so like, wow, awesome. that is so yeah. nice. So what we get here is you have a circle with a square in it, and I just peeled away the, uh, the, uh, the circle portion of it, and the square remained intact. I would actually probably pick off the square again and make sure that we're not digging too deeply into that. Even feel underneath, and if I feel an impression of that circle or square under there, I would probably um, change my settings. Settings are good. I did test it before. I didn't want to look silly in front of all you good folks out there. So closing up the lid. And it'll tell you the lid's open if you can't do anything without it. I'm going to hit function again just to get back to square one. I'm going to move the material back so we don't lose anything. Because if I started printing from there, it would start with its tongue out, basically, and I would lose that first foot of media or so. So I'm going to move that over, slide this over to the right. I mean, I'm all using just arrow keys here, okay? These are nothing but um, up, down, and left, and right arrows to position the head. I've got it on the edge of the material and I'm just missing that uh, test cut that I did. I'm gonna hit function and the first thing that comes up is base point and I hit enter. That's setting the base point there. So it's gonna start printing and cutting from that particular spot. That's all the setup there is on this front end. We won't get into, there's a lot more. And if you would purchase one of these, you would get a lot more training on site to really understand everything that goes with it. Uh, we're not talking so much about the machine as we're talking about the process at this point. 
maybe a later date we'll get even more granular about the printer itself and the maintenance and all the other things. We will talk about cost to produce. All that to say, let's make pretty pictures. I'm going to slide over here just where we were before. Just click on that icon. I can find my cursor. There it is. And hit print. Again, I just need one of each for this one. More times than not, at this point, you would be, um, you would be uh, doing more than just one or two, although one or two is fine. There's no penalty for doing just one or two. So, uh, but, so you can gang multiples of these. And the best thing about it is it's all unattended. So it prints and cuts while I'm busy somewhere else. It's fun to watch, but it's not making any money. It's like watching an embroidery machine go. You're not making any money, so it'll be about you know, you know, hooping and tearing out more backing, et cetera. So while this is printing and cutting, I'm, I'm, I'm working elsewhere. So it's going to really, it's kind of like an unpaid employee, which is awesome. Maybe they don't call off work or anything. All right, starting to print. Show us what you got, Joe. This is the, fa this is the magic. So what print, type, I'm sorry, what type of ink is loaded into the printer? These are all eco-solvent-based inks. So any media that you're looking for with this type of printer, you're going to want something that is, uh, that's uh, compatible with the solvent or eco-solvent-based ink. Difference between eco-solvent and solvent. Eco-solvent don't need ventilation. True solvent, while it's a really robust type of ink and much better durability for outdoor use, etc., uh, but it is, can be hazardous. So it's one that you'd have to vent the area with. Here, we don't even get a, a, any type of smell or anything while this is going on while it's printing. In uh, the inks and the heat transfer vinyl that we're utilizing for this transfer, this is what really sets it apart from your basic desktop inkjet printing on oh transfer yeah. paper. Yeah, if you're going to those and you're using just your little Epson or Canon or whatever it is, those are pigment-based inks, not very durable, not super uh, ink saturation. Uh, it's the ink itself that doesn't hold up very well, and even the media itself is not as, as uh, durable as this. These particular inks are designed to be outdoors for three years with no UV protection. So basically, uh, you know, the, the weather, the, the elements aren't, aren't going to affect it. It's definitely going to hold up in your wash. And everything that we have has been lab tested for 50 plus washing and drying cycles. So you can just rest assured that we've certified the material knowing that it's, it's exceptionally durable um, and actually pretty easy to work with. And one of our customers asked, what is the main difference between SuperTech Opaque and SuperTech Sublistop? Mm -hmm. SuperTech Opaque and SuperTech Sublistop, uh, the exact same material on the top, just that Sublistop has that extra uh, coating on the back, that charcoal, that black design that we saw, or the uh, uh, substance we saw on the back during, on the adhesive portion of it, that helps block the dye migration. Otherwise, they're both the same. They have universal adhesive. They adhere to everything, including cotton, polyester, nylon, silk, leather. They just keep, you know, there's not much that you can't apply to. They apply at a low temp, as low as 280, and they have good stretch and rebound. So it's a great material. Uh, comparatively speaking, compared to, say, the express print and the soft opaque, which are more just for cotton and polyester, your more day-to-day -day type material, the more affordable option when it comes to that. Um, but the, those other two, express print and soft opaque, a little more user friendly. I am careful. I there's when you get into the, especially the soft opaque, um, or the super tech opaque. I'm sorry, detail is, is difficult. So you wouldn't you you know fine designs, fine lines, things like that. I would I would choose otherwise first if I could help it. So every material has its own characteristics. Um, every you know, the express print is a total matte finish. The super tech line does have a little bit of a gloss to it. Some people like that gloss because it gives you a little more a little richer color. Other people prefer the matte finish because it looks feels more like looks more like ink, uh, which doesn't really typically gloss like screen print type of ink. Yeah, and it, it all honestly reminds me of whenever you're comparing just basic single color heat transfer vinyl too. Mm -hmm. There's some that are made for a more premium look and feel, exactly. and some that are more basic. So really, the same concept there. Yeah, and this soft opaque. The characteristics on this one is it is stretchable. And it gives, gives nicely with the fabric. They both apply about the same temp, right around the 300 degree mark, uh, which is still not high. You know, it's still, that's pretty safe on most, most materials. All right, so that, while we were gabbing, that printed and cut it. And so now we're ready to take it off the machine. Simple deal. Uh, the old version, the version before this, I used to have to do one more step. And now it still scares me that I don't go and take out the, the, uh, the media guides, the media clamps on the side. There's little pieces of metal that are holding the material down so it doesn't, you know, doesn't, doesn't get raise up in the air and get a head strike or anything like that. Well, they've changed it. They've engineered it now that there's an actual groove in the 
um, the, the MIDI clamps now that I don't have to take those out. So it's, it will safely cut through those. Another little hack I like to, because this thing automatically advances about an inch and a half worth of material forward. I back it up a little bit before I hit the sheet cut because it's always going to push forward. It wants to make sure it's not going to cut your ink. We know that it's going to do that, so we, we compensate for it. I hit function, down arrow twice, and hit enter. It's going to do a sheet cut. Zip. Different blade than what it was cutting with before. It's an actual sheet cut blade. And then we're done. Now comes the fun part. And honestly, this is dry. You don't have to worry about that. Unlike, uh, say, if you're doing the decal, for example, we'll talk about that too. Some of the more glossy material, it can stay tacky. So a lot of people, most people, especially when doing decal, won't even bother weeding or doing anything with this until it's sat for a period of time. Basically, it's called gassing out, so it actually cures and, dies, and, uh, and dries. This particular material, almost every heat transfer vinyl, even though you'll see on our website at times that it's best to wait for an hour, there's some certain scenarios where you could use some dry time. Um, the glitter product is one of those for sure for me. So let's get to the, to the part that we love, weed and mask. I'm going to cut them apart so we're dealing with that designs individually. Normally, I would just do all this. In fact, I'll be working with a, a piece. Honestly, I usually try to do it in bite-sized pieces. Even if I have 100 designs to do, I would probably set up my file to only print maybe about three feet worth of media because I have to manage this and I have to put it on a table and you're going to end up cutting it up anyway. I might as well take some off the machine and start weeding and masking and pressing and then send another batch to it so while it's functioning while I'm functioning. It's great to wake up in the morning and have 100 designs laying on the floor, but you, didn't, you weren't busy during that time. So I like to break it up in batches. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this little excess white. Don't need all that. Going to go back and get my weeder. You need at least 17 of these. No matter where you go, you're not going to have enough weeders. So keep them everywhere. Well, I get to sit. Yay. All right, so just like any other weeding, you find a place that you're comfortable with starting on a corner. I started on the difficult one that actually has uh, text in it. Not difficult, but difficult part for me is getting started. <laughs> there we go. And just like any other type of weeding, if it is cut properly, you just do the uh, pull and wiggle. I say pull and wiggle, that means you're just changing direction so that it grabs all the other, you know, some things go different directions, it comes a lot, a lot easier. Typically, we, on, when doing text, we come from the right side because most of the characters would be open from that side. There's less resistance. Wiggle while you weed. That's wiggle while you say. weed. <laughs> all right. There's that. Now, there are a couple places. These ears actually do come out, believe it or not designed to go on a light shirt. If I didn't want to, if I wanted those white to say white, I would just eliminate the cut lines in there. That's where you're doing that in your art program. But this one I just designed to go on a, to a lighter shirt so we have these. And now all I have to do is grab these little guys in the center, little cavities of the E's and O's and B's, etc. Some people use tweezers. I just can't do it. I'm sure I can start a whole major debate here on that one. Okay, now, ready to mask. With this particular material, this is gonna, for those of you who actually use this product, let me show you, as you can actually see little brother ready to go. Um, for those of you who use this particular product, you may have found that you've had some difficulty getting for the next part, which is gonna be masking. We have many different types of, of mask. This is our Magic Mask Medium Tack. I find that that works well with this. Some of you who are using it will say, not so much, big boy, but it is true, and I'll show you why. Uh, we have more aggressive masks, but they can also be hard to work with and just kind of get a little bit aggravating. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece of this off. Give me the extra roll. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in half. I got way more than what I need, but nobody wants to look silly on TV. I'm going to cut it in half because I'm going to use the rest of it for the girl version of this. Peeling off the carrier, there's just basically a waxed paper that is on the, that keeps this, you know, so it doesn't stick to itself on the roll. 
I'll save that because I'm going to be using that in just a minute because if I'm not going to ready to press right away, I want to put it back on. I go down from the top, hit it from the middle, and let the rest fall out to the sides. I am searching diligently for my it's squeegee. Under there. Yeah, it's under there. there you ah, go. so much for diligent. There it is. I knew I had it. This wasn't real bright. Usually from the middle out, this is such a small design, I can really just take it from top to bottom and then push out the rest. You want to lean into this a little bit to make sure that you've got good adhesion. The problem that people have experienced with this is that it wouldn't come off of the carrier. And normally, and I'm going to do this from the back as well just to make sure, it's not a bad practice to have because I'm going to take the carrier off first anyway. Now, most products, you would just at this point just peel, peel it away just like you would normally, just kind of horizontally from the, uh, from the back and carefully. Yeah, that's a good mask. But what we're going to do is, I got to stand for this, <laughs> is we're going to do with the old Band-Aid method. So it's a grip and rip. I, we have found that using this Magic Mask Medium Tech with this product, if you just give it a quick, <laughs> it works. First time, every time. I tested it to make sure. But magic. It, it is magic. It's magic mask. If I had pulled and babied that a little bit, there's a good chance that I would have lost some of the detail. It's just the way that this particular material adheres to this. It's better for a quick, just like when you want to take off a Band-Aid, basically. You're going to give it a quick grip and rip. And speaking to that a little bit more, uh, the reason this is a little bit different than some of the other print cut materials you're using with your eco-solvent printers uh, this is very thin. So we're actually looking at half of the thickness of the other products uh, yes. that you can print on. Uh, so typically they range anywhere between 80 and 90 microns thick, and this is what, 45? It's stupid thin, It's yeah. between 40 and yeah. 45 ballpark. It's very thin um, so that we can get a full color print and it feel nice on the garment because yeah. we've always heard in the past, this feels like a sticker, it's too bulky, right. um, and this product really keeps that from happening. Right. And it's a low enough temp that you're not going to affect most products. Guaranteed, if you get into the tri-blends and the, some of the polyesters, yeah, the temp might be a little high, but it's like 300, 310 degrees. So you stay around that 300 mark, you're usually good for most fabrics. All right, so that's Little Brother. Um, do you, what are we looking at on time? Uh, we should probably, why don't you, uh, do you want to go ahead and press this while I'm, while I'm weeding and masking the other one? Sure. I'm going to just go ahead and get that started. We'll do Little Brother first. He goes on that little gray shirt. Great. So at the heat press, I'm just rotating uh, my platen. It was in the landscape. I want um, it to be a little bit skinnier so I can easily thread on that T-shirt mm -hmm. um, and isolate that print area. So that's one thing we always talk about um, with heat pressing is being able to thread and isolate certain areas of an item or garment so that there aren't any seams getting in the way. Since I'm just working with a basic cotton T-shirt, um, nothing really causing any issue. I can just lay it right on top of that platen, but I still am able to get those thick seams from the sleeves and the collar out of the way so we have a nice flat surface area. All right, I'm just doing a preheat by locking that down for a few seconds there, roughly around three to five seconds. This is good enough to get a preheat, release some of those wrinkles from the fabric and any moisture that could be in there. Uh, and now we're applying. So it's just as simple as placing it right in the um, designated area where you want your design to go, covering with a cover sheet. Wherever that ended up, I'm going to grab that real quick. And that's actually kind of optional. Right now you're just really protecting your garment in case she, she was a miss and did some sublimation on the previous one, which she mm -hmm. actually did. Um, so, but it really has its own carrier. It's not absolutely necessary but it's not a bad practice to do. Yeah, and at this point, whether you're using a cover sheet or not, it is um, all out of practice. Um, a lot of people choose to use it, some don't. Mm -hmm. I do, just to be safe. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, all right, and is soft opaque, you'll have to remind me, is that a hot peel or a cold peel? It's a hot peel. Hot yep. peel, okay. Yep. So soft opaque, you just remove that carrier as soon as it's done heat applying. And this really, what I love about this product is it doesn't give you a heat transfer vinyl look. 
it gives you more of an ink look and feel as opposed to just something laying right on top. So if you're looking for a full color digital process that really um, feels and looks great on a garment, this is it. It feels like an ink as opposed to a heat transfer vinyl, which is what we're always trying to avoid whenever we're producing for our customers. We want it to look and feel like an ink because that's what's mostly known. Um, as far as retail and people buying apparel is what an ink feels like. Yeah, it's about to get loud in here again, so adjust your sets. Wow, good aggressive mask there, I'll tell you. <laughs> and we did have a question come in while we're applying the second one. Um, did you add a bleed to your art? That's a good question. I did not. I wasn't going to get that deep, but boy, you guys are ahead of me. Two ways, when it's, they say put a bleed on your art, the biggest concern is that you could potentially, if you're not calibrated perfectly and you're cutting too exactly on the ink line, there's a chance you see just a wisp of the white material in there. So two ways to go about that, depending on the image, this would be a good one. You can actually take your cut line and bump it in, so contour to the inside by like .002, then delete the other one. Or you could have just put a stroke or a bleed around extra black, extra yellow all the way around this, or even a, a common color of the, of the uh, fabric that you're going to be pressing on and cut that in case it shows a little hint. I personally like to sh let, the, you know, let the design be the design and not add any secondary color to that because it almost never really matches perfectly. So I would either you know, always increase the, the ink itself and cut into that or just t tuck it in just a little bit. Some designs are too fine that that would actually dis, you know, distort the image, but for the most part, I find that to be the most, uh, most effective. But good question, and it's a, it is a common practice to do one of those. All right, and for both of these applications uh, that we're doing, um, they're both cotton t-shirts. So soft opaque goes on cotton, cotton poly blends, um, even some more synthetic fabrics like rayon, uh, spandex. Does this one adhere to nylon? It does I not. It okay. I don't believe okay. so. I think it's just cotton and poly. But I've been wrong before. Check your local listings. Always go to styles.com <laughs> for those. Okay. All right, and our second application is done. So um, with the idea in mind that these are to be sold as a set, what did you think you that um, as far as your cost to produce goes, what would you sell this for? Well, I'm interested to know even what the audience would sell these as a set. Yeah, let's for hear them too. first and see yeah. what you've got. You've got birthday shirt, little, little sister and little brother, or at least big sister, and little brother, all going to her unicorn birthday party. And now they look cool. Their parents are the, are the proudest ever. <laughs> what would you sell? individually as a set, what would you think? We can do the cost breakdown. I mean, I can tell you exactly what it costs to produce each one of those. I don't know the blank, blank cost, but you're going to get into that a little more detail here in a little bit, I believe. Yeah, actually, um, that's the next step in this process is figuring out cost to produce sure. and what we can sell things for. So um, there's some people commenting in. Robin says between $18 to $24 each. Nice. And um, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you break down your cost as you're producing these things as far as ink goes, materials? Yeah. Well, yeah, I know just from experience that with standard heat transfer vinyl, all of your components, everything's short of your labor. Material that you print on, the ink you print with, and even the mass to lift it up with. All of your direct cost components. With, say, express print and soft opaque, you are realistically under two cents a square inch. So if you take a look at the designs, you look at, take a quick look at the designs, sorry, did I mess up your, your frame? We were looking at, I, didn't, I could look this on the screen too, but this is about four by eight. Okay, so I've got 32 square inches there, two cents. I've got 64 cents in that particular design. That's if I, now you wanna include, and that's with some waste included. Now, obviously if you're gonna space them three inches apart in every design, then you could have some issues. Uh, because you're just you're wasting material, but maximizing, you know, getting the most out, best yield out of all of your material, you're looking at about two cents a square inch. Now, when you get into the higher end products, you could get upwards of three and maybe even four cents a square inch, especially when you get into some of the special effect type of materials. But for heat transfer, uh, those are your basic costs. 
there's a way to find that out exactly with every one that you do because we've got a cost calculator that breaks down what, is, what your uh, ink is per square inch, square foot. I mean, honestly, the ink is the cheapest part of those three numbers that I mentioned. Uh, now we're down to like less than 19 cents a square foot, not square inch, square foot. So a full 12 by 12, full bleed, totally covered with ink. There's only about 19 cents for that. So you divide that by 144, the ink is such a small, there's like a couple zeros past to the right of the decimal. Um, and I think that's a surprise to a yeah. lot of uh, people that are either looking to get into this or even users uh, now that mm -hmm. the ink does not make up a ton of that cost. It's actually pennies compared to yeah. everything else. The ink is the most expensive liquid in the world. So everybody looks at that and goes, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. but, but this particular, it's so, the way it's, it's, and the ink itself is not super expensive, but it's also the way that the, the printer is distributing the ink is very, very stingy with it. So it's very, very, you know, a little bit is very efficient. A little bit goes a long, long way. Most people, when they buy, there's 500 milliliter cartridges in this CMYK, four cartridges in this machine. Most people, uh, we just gone by average because everybody prints differently. They usually get at least nine months out of a set of ink and they don't start buying ink until at that point. Now, if I was doing Banners are us, and I'm blowing it out 24-7. Yeah, you're going to use a lot more. But under normal conditions, average use, about nine, six to nine months. Yeah. All right. So um, with that being said, let's take a look at the cost calculator because this will help some of you break it down a little bit further. For those of you that want to be able to get a um, cost per square inch um, as far as your designs go. So the cost calculator that we've been showing um, in the past couple weeks in some of our lives and even yesterday when we were getting our single color heat transfer vinyl costs, you're going to be able to use that same cost calculator. Uh, is this a, if this is the first time you're seeing it and you're wondering how to get it, um, you can follow the link that we have. This is also on our website. It's a free download. It's just an Excel file that you can keep um, and be able to edit and get your costs. But what we've included in addition to those single color heat transfer materials is our print cut materials and mask. All right, so um, assuming you're using the same mask that uh, we provide you with with each of these materials, um, that's going to be included in the overall cost. Uh, so Bob, I'm going to ask you some questions um, here in a little bit, but starting with the beginning, step one is going to um, give you your overhead percentage and your hourly rate as far as your labor goes. Uh, so you guys fill these out specific to your business and what you know you wanna charge um, for that, right? Step two is the job info. So this is going to be specific to the job you're printing for your customers, including the garment and the amount of time you're spending in your labor. All right, so we did cut two total designs, right? So we're gonna change that to two. Um, average time to weed and mask. So what would you say it took you to do both of those? Three minutes, maybe? Uh, not even close. Not even close? Okay. But you can be careful because mm -hmm. a lot of folks will, and it's a, it's a danger too, you keep wanting to add a little add on each one. I say be real with it. If you mm -hmm. want to add your, your profit at the end, do it. But don't, you might press yourself out of the job if you say, well, I better allow five minutes for that, or I better, you know, if it right. literally took me 45 seconds to do both if I went at it, like I was not talking while I was doing it. Okay, so we'll just keep it at two minutes. Let's do to that. Be safe. Um, and then your average heat press time, so it only takes 10 minutes. So uh, definitely less than a minute, but we'll put a minute there um, for, both, for um, both of those designs to be heat applied. And then we can include the cost of our blank garment. Um, so we are working with youth apparel. We know that that runs um, fairly low. If we wanted to be as specific as possible with this, um, let's go with the rabbit skins um, mm -hmm. ruffle tee uh, that they offer, which is roughly um, $3. So I'm just going to put that in their uh, ballpark. Again, if you want to be as specific as possible with this, keep track of what your garment costs are because that is a large part of your cost to it's produce. It's the biggest number. Mm -hmm. um, and then total number of garments sold, so two. All right, and now uh, we're getting specific to the design size information. So for the first design that we did for the girls' T-shirt, um, what was your width and length for that? All right, and he's just going to look that up in So Versa much Works. pressure. <laughs> Let's retain this. I'm clicking on that, looking at it. You can get this exactly, but what we'll do is we'll allow for the space in between. Um, so, there we are, I'm on the wrong one. It is 6.25 by 
Hmm. So we call it seven by nine. You can do that or get specific. Or you got it? Or. Yeah. Uh, and then the second design for the boys t-shirt. Little guy, I estimated that before. Boy, I was real close. It is four inches wide by seven and a quarter high. All right. So as we're filling all this information, you can see uh, the variants over here um, adjusting based off of what we're entering. Uh, so we'll scroll, scroll down and we're gonna find our soft opaque there and it's gonna break that down. So you can see we have $1.67 in material cost, okay? Uh, and then our heat press cost, weeding and masking costs, and our overhead percentage costs in there as well. Um, all including the um, blank cost and your total cost to produce here. So this breaks that all down for you. So if we're going with that information we just entered in, we're looking at $6.91 for cost to produce per garment. Mm -hmm. um, so that, um, that's where I would start if I was considering what I was going to sell uh, each garment for. So people do it two different ways. We were talking about it yesterday, um, how you can accurately mark it up. I always say, you know your customers best, you know what they're willing to pay for. Um, and there were some people commenting in and saying, well, I know in my area, I could sell that for 40 to $45 nice. for, for those. So it's it's really about knowing your customers and what they're willing to pay for, but you also wanna make, for, make sure you're profiting yeah, as well. Yeah, the biggest thing is to know what you have in it mm -hmm. entirely top to bottom, including your overhead, your wage, your you know, whatever you're char pe you know, paying people to do some of the work for you, as well as the direct cost to produce. You may also be amortizing in, hey, I bought this printer and I want to pay that sucker off, so let's get let's add some of that in there, uh, just to make sure that you're covered, and then it's when you put your profit on top of that. Uh, Josh likes to, and I kind of agree with it, add a profit per piece type of, of scenario, where I'm not going to do anything unless I make at least 4 or $5 per, per item. I just have to. And of course, it has the higher end, and because percentages can be deceptive, mm -hmm. you know all that stuff. We're not going to talk too much about that because we have a lot more stuff to cover, and we're running out of time. In under eight minutes. <laughs> In under eight minutes. <laughs> all right, so we can do this. Um, so if you want to be able to offer your full color uh, designs to your customers, but you're just not looking to invest in this printer right away, uh, we do have a solution for you. Uh, and that's called the Stalls Artwork Uploader. So if you go to our website, you'll notice in the top right-hand corner, there is an artwork uploader that allows you to upload your artwork and get a heat transfer. And all you have to do is use your heat press at that point. We do the rest of the work for you. We send your heat transfers ready to heat apply. Um, so you guys, um, I urge you to go online and upload your designs. Um, if you're looking for full color designs, that is going to be the CAD prints option. Again, that's CAD prints. So there are a variety of different options you can get with um, all the different transfers that we offer uh, because we want to make sure that you have the option sure. to um, offer all these different types of Full color transfers. is trending. It's been not just trending, but it's almost in demand at this point. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, well, a lot of designs are single color, and that's great. And we, CAD cut is just great. You can do it yourself, or we can get it through us as well. But there's been a real, real move towards full color type of images and a lot of different ways to produce that. This is one of the more popular and, and, and durable ways to do it. I want to talk briefly, because I, I have to. Uh, this machine was designed to do a lot more things than just heat transfer. We're the people that took the technology and kind of pushed it into the heat transfer market for the apparel market. But what else can I do with this? And I love to speak to the versatility of this machine. Add on sales by doing decals. Simple. Stickers, as you call them. I say not stickers. Stickers is what you get for being good at the dentist. This is, these are decals. This is what you put on your car. These are long-lasting, full-color images. There happen to be 50 of these on this particular sheet out of one yard of 20-inch decal material, which is kind of rare if it's 20-inch anyway. Uh, but what's it cost me to produce that? We were talking in the, uh, we were in the 70, 80, some of those were even mm -hmm. higher, you know, some close to a dollar something for full-color designs. A design this size, including the material and ink, you're looking at about a nickel, about five cents to be able to produce one of those. What can I sell it for? Easily, I mean, the retail is like around $5, $2 wholesale, wholesale $5 retail, rough, rough numbers, but you see the markup that's available on these. So your customer has a great left chest logo that they love full color, you just did them for their apparel. Hey, let's get you some decals. Maybe give them a couple, it didn't cost you hardly anything. And then they get the, then they start producing this, uh, you know, this buzz around town. They show off their product, their, their, their logo well, even on hard surfaces. 
Uh, also, uh, wall graphics. I don't uh, have one here, but it's, I don't know if it's even worth showing, but, but a wall graphic is an ultra-removable, repositionable fabric type of wall graphic, fat heads for short, sorry about the brand, but that's what people have called it in the, in, in the past. This is, this is a type of design that you could put, this is a very, very, very small version of it, but I used to travel with this, so I kept it small. Uh, you could put this on the wall, take it down, put it back up as many times as you want. Great for kids' rooms, nurseries, uh, that, type of, that type of thing where, where you want these duckies and horses and dinosaurs and things on the walls. And you can, beyond that, you can actually go to a, a satin canvas. So you've got a, a gallery wrap type of canvas that could do full you know, high-res images. The higher the res photo, the better your, print, your print's going to look. A lot of money in this as well. Uh, I've actually made... Christmas presents. I have my, again, my granddaughter is, is reigning supreme on this one, but uh, when she was first born, everybody needed to see some really cool stuff from her, and so I actually created some of these and gave away as Christmas presents. Simple one by twos from, and zip screws, and off you go. A lot of money, and this is a, more of a, a premium type of product, so you can, you can really uh, garner a much bigger uh, retail price for something like that. Those of you who have bought these for senior pictures and weddings, you know what you pay for those. And we had uh, someone ask specifically um, a little bit more on the maintenance of the printer. Is this something that you have to run daily like a DTG no, printer? No, just a quick overview. It is the most maintenance-free, if there is such a thing, in the, when it comes to inkjet printing that there is. Unlike your sublimation, your DTG, where you're, especially with the DTG, and everything keeps getting better, I get it, but this one hasn't had to get better because it's always been good. Um, Leave it plugged into the wall. It turns itself on every 24 hours. Does a very uh, clean, uh, short cleaning cycle. Uh, it uses next to no ink. Well, when it don't get scared, not wasting ink at this point in any kind of volume. Uh, and beyond that, it's maybe once a week you'll wipe around the print, print head with a swab just to pick up any ink that may have splashed up around that. Don't touch the print head, just around it. And then maybe, and, and technicians can, can get a little more granular with this, but. Uh, maybe once a month or every three weeks or so, you'll end up coming over to this side of the printer and just wiping off the, uh, the wipers that, that actually clean the print head off. It's a little felt, uh, basically like a windshield wiper that, that takes the excess ink off it before it goes down to the capping station. So not much maintenance at all, which is our love. So for those of you that have been joining us all week, you know we have been uh, pooling uh, winners from our surveys. So... Um, just keep in mind, if you guys are filling out those surveys, we are pulling directly from those names in order to win a marketing kit. Uh, so do you want to talk a little bit about what's in the marketing kit, and then we'll pick our winners? I'm sorry. Which marketing kit are we talking about? The marketing kit from Transfer Express. Transfer Express. Sorry. I was, I was elsewhere. I was actually getting some of our show specials that I wanted to get into as well. That's a busy day. Marketing kit includes the price guide, ink color selector, window clean. You can read all that stuff. What it is is a full-blown package with a lot of different samples of all the types of transfers the Transfer Express, yeah, Transfer Express <laughs> provides, including the, the ink color selector, which is a big deal. So what, what color is there red? There's their red, and I can actually show that to a customer. Also, the idea book. A lot of the, just kind of like when you go onto their, um, their design uh, feature on their, on their website, you see all the templates and all the clip art that's available. And it is generic, so they really don't know that it's Transfer Express, uh, but they can pick out some of these designs that are interactive that you can create. It's a really great way to get started uh, with transfers, because transfers are just as easy as it gets. Mm -hmm. There's no work, no fuss, no muss, especially in volume. This is great for full color in shorter runs and not super, super high detail. If you want to get into full color that has fine detail, uh, but I still need maybe a little more volume, then the stretch litho is the way to go. And which, I don't know if we have time to even get into stretch litho <laughs> now, but it's yeah, an option. Yeah, so we'll make sure to hit on that soon That's in another some show. of our upcoming shows because that is such a great product and we want to make sure we're uh, doing it justice whenever right. we're talking about it. Um, but let's go ahead and announce those winners. Uh, the first one is Vern from Vern's Designs in California. Hey, Vern. Then we have Richard um, from Tool Investment LLC in Arkansas, and um, Jean or Jean. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that long wrong. Um, that's from Fit Stitch Embroidery in Michigan. How do they get in this? How does that happen? Yeah, so this is by filling out that survey. So again, that link um, will flash on the screen for you. 
Uh, if you fill out this survey, again, this not only helps you enter in to win these marketing kits, but this gives us information on what you guys would like to see during these broadcasts. And we're going to continue to do this as, as long as we can uh, during this time so that we can keep uh, interacting with you guys and showing you different processes um, throughout the industry that you could start incorporating once things are back up and running in um, a safe space. So um, you want to talk a little bit about those show specials show before specials, we Show specials, real briefly, and I apologize that we're rushing through this. I'm not even in the right place, but when we go to the top, here you go. Because trade shows have been canceled and nobody, everybody's grounded, everybody's staying home and watching Netflix and doing it, cleaning your house, hopefully. Um, all the we we want to give you an opportunity to take advantage of the same show specials that we would have had at trade shows. How do you get these right off the bat? If you can see right here on the front end, please contact customer service to place an order. That's real quickly. We want to show you here. We've got an auto clamp, 16 by 16, and with all of these packages, it includes all of the cool things that you typically buy because of the versatility that we have with these. The extra platens, uh, the interchangeable lower platens. You've got the 11 by 15. Uh, and the 6x10, $100 product credit, that Transfer Express marketing kit that's included, free ground shipping for $1,750. You're saving $550. The same type of package for the 16x20 at $2,050. Um, everything else is included. The Fusion, our number, Fusion IQ 16x20, our number one selling press. You get the 16x20, 11x15, all the quick slips, the 6x10, and the 6x20 leg and sleeve platen, plus the $100 product credit. $700 savings on that one. These are all top notch. And then we get into the creme de la creme when you get into the air fusion and the dual air fusion. Similar packages there, savings of $500, uh, dual air fusion, 7825. And you notice that there's a, a spirit sale package there. So you can actually pick up a, a spirit sale at a discounted price by purchasing these. In addition to that, 15% off, 15% off, that's higher than usual. Pre-cut letters and numbers and Transfer Express numbers includes packets and kits, packs and kits. Cutters, 1895 and 1813 respectively for both the GS24 Roland as well as the GraphTech CE6000. That's a just reduced price on some of those. Um, free shipping uh, with the promo code SHIP2020 on orders over $199. We're really trying to make this easy for you to kind of reset your business and, and kind of get ready for when this all blows over and it's going to blow over folks. Uh, so get excited, get ramped up, get ready to go. Those are your options as far as your, your, your show specials. All right. Thank you. And thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, hopefully we'll see you back next week. We'll see what happens, uh, but we hope to be here um, throughout the remainder of next week, whether it be from this studio or even from our homes. <laughs> uh, but we hope to see you guys. Um, thank you again so much for joining. Um, we'll see you next time. Be safe.